In this video, we're going to talk about common tricks that police use to manipulate people into confessions during interrogations in Canada. Police have a very wide discretion in how they conduct their interrogations. There's only two things they can't do, and it's not because they don't want to, it's because the Supreme Court of Canada told them they can't. The police can't make threats, and they can't make promises. That doesn't stop them from trying. And in fact, they still use a number of tricks to get people to give them confessions. You have to remember the police go to school and are trained how to get people to give them confessions. My name is Michael Oikman. I'm a criminal defense lawyer. And on my channel, I share information about defending your rights in Canada. Beyond what you see here today, I've created an entire video on why you should never talk to the police. Be sure to check out the link in the description below. Stick around to the end of this video for my number one piece of advice, and it involves your cell phone and what to do with it during a police interrogation. Let's look at some specific tricks the police will use during your interrogation to manipulate you. First, the police will try to get you into a conversation. They'll talk about things that have nothing to do with the case. They'll talk about the weather. They'll talk about your work. They'll talk about your school, anything under the sun. They don't care about any of that. They're trying to establish a relationship where you feel comfortable speaking with them. The next thing the police will do is try to appeal to your common sense. They're gonna tell you that they are just there trying to understand what happened. They're just trying to get to the truth. Listen for that. They will usually say that. They're just trying to understand what happened. That's the basic form of appealing to your common sense. The next level of trickery is that the police will tell you that they have a victim saying that you committed an offense. And they just have one side of the story. They need your side of the story. Otherwise, all they will have is the complainant's or the victim's side of the story. Remember, the police can't use threats or promises, but they're basically telegraphing to you that if you don't say something to them, if you don't deny what happened or start talking, the threat is that they will rely on what the complainant said, put that in the report, and only that version will be used to convict you. But that's not the whole story you have a right to remain silent. And if you don't give your side of the story to the police during the police interrogation, that is not the end of the story. You will still have an opportunity to tell the police what happened, tell the Crown Prosecutor what happened, or tell the judge what happened. But you'll do it on your terms and on your own schedule. Next level of trickery. It's not exactly a bad cop routine, but it definitely has some overtones. If you don't say anything to the police, they start looking like they're frustrated. And maybe they are frustrated, but whatever they're showing to you, they're doing that strategically. They're trying to pressure you into telling them what they want you to say by showing you their discomfort. Piling on to that, they're going to try to make you somewhat uncomfortable, but without you really actually appreciating that. Some of the things that the police will try to do subtly is keep the room super cold or maybe crank the heat in the room. They won't expressly tell you that you can go use the bathroom. They won't offer you water. They won't offer you food. They won't offer you a chance to go have a cigarette if you're a smoker. They'll keep you somewhat uncomfortable. Again, that discomfort is meant to induce you to provide information to them. Don't fall for it. One very common trick that police try to use is to undermine legal advice to remain silent. They won't expressly say that you shouldn't listen to what your lawyer says because that won't be admissible in court, but they will sure come close to the line. One of the things that they'll say is, well, all lawyers say that. And the other thing they might say is, well, your lawyer's not here right now, is he? They often come close to the line in that regard. Be mindful of that. Don't let them convince you that your lawyer doesn't have your best interests at heart. Listen to your lawyer's advice. Another trick the police employ that comes close to the line of being impermissible is stressing the positive effect of your cooperation. It's not uncommon for the police to say, well, how you respond to these questions and your level of cooperation with the police will definitely be noted in the police report. And the police officer will give a personal recommendation or a personal note to either the Crown Prosecutor or a judge 
commending you on your cooperation. Cooperation is not synonymous with a confession. You can be cooperative. You don't have to be rude. In fact, you shouldn't be rude. That does not mean you should tell the police whatever they want to hear or give any statement whatsoever. You can exercise your right to remain silent while being cooperative throughout the entire process. Some of the tricks are so subtle, even lawyers have a hard time recognizing them. For example, another trick the police use is asking you if there's anyone else they should be talking to regarding this case. If you say yes, that means you know something about the case. Most of the time, people will say no, but that's an implicit indication that you know what they're talking about and they're talking to the right person because presumably you know what's going on and you were involved in that case. That information, that simple answer will be used against you. Another technique that police use is leaning on your moral or ethical or religious conscience. One of the things that they'll ask you is, is there anything you would like to say to the victim or their family? This works really well when somebody really was hurt and they ask you, what would you like them to know? What would you like to say to them? And if you're a regular person with a heart, with a conscience, you might try to say something like, you're sorry for what happened to them. That will be used against you. That will suggest that you're sorry for what happened because you did it. Don't give a statement in response to that kind of lead-in. It's a trick the police are using to get you to talk. The next trick ties into that moral conscience and it's leaning on your religious beliefs and the police saying something like, what would God say? You're a God-fearing man. You're a religious individual. What do your teachings tell you? Don't fall for it. Another trick the police use is the off the record conversation. It's not even during the formal interrogation. What happens is the police will turn off the mic or turn off the camera, maybe take you out for a cigarette if you're a smoker, and then say casually to you, hey, now the interrogation's over, tell us what really happened. There is no off the record. The next technique the police might try to use is planting an undercover officer in your jail cell or in the transport vehicle you're in. If somebody in your jail cell starts talking to you about what happened, don't fall for it. You shouldn't be talking to anyone about anything to do with your case except for your lawyer. One of the most basic tricks the police can use against you is to flat out lie to you. You need to understand that the police are allowed to lie during any police interrogation. There is no rule obligating them to tell the truth. One of the best examples of this police trick is them telling you that they have a piece of evidence that confirms your guilt. This could be a bold-faced lie, but it could be used to trick you into saying something you didn't otherwise mean to say. A more nuanced way that the police might lie to you is planting a false piece of information that is not definitive of the case, but it's enough to trick you into talking. For example, the police might add a clearly false piece of information that doesn't have a lot to do with the case, but they're hoping to induce you into correcting that misinformation, and that gets you talking. Remember that the tricks that we've talked about are just the tip of the iceberg. The critical piece of advice here is to exercise your right to remain silent, and if you do that, you won't be able to fall for any of their tricks. Now that we've covered some of the basic tricks, let's get back to my number one tip. If you are ever called in for an investigation, never bring your cell phone with you. What will happen, and we've seen this many, many times, is that you will come in with a cell phone like most people do. What you don't realize is that police will always search you when they arrest you, when you show up for an interrogation. And when they search you, they will seize your cell phone. Now you've lost your cell phone, and now they have access to information that could possibly be used to incriminate you. Write the name and number of your lawyer on your arm and have that on the ready to call your lawyer and exercise your right to silence. If you ever find yourself in a situation where the police are looking to talk to you or bring you in for an investigation, make sure to call us right away. We'd be happy to talk to you, explain the process, and explain what we can do to help.